Hi everyone, it is Ariana Di Gamonte speaking. I'm a PhD student at the Royal College of Music in London and I'm so pleased to present my research on what I've called musical grills, metal grills to grill fish and play music in the 16th and 17th century Europe. Salmon roast in sauce. Take a salmon and cut him round, china and all, and roast the pieces on a gridiron, and take wine and powder of canal, and draw it through a strainer. And take small mist onions and cast there too, and let to him boil. And then take vinegar or verjuice and powder ginger and cast there too. And then lay the salmon in a dish and cast the syrup thereon all hot and serve it torth. The gridire mentioned in this English manuscript of cookery from circa 1440 held in the British Library is a metal gridiron run which was a common cooking appliance for grilling food over the fire. It was made of raw iron and shaped as a grid with a long handle so that it was possible to hold it over the fire. Sometimes it had feet so that the grill could rest over the fireplace. In medieval times, nearly every household throughout Europe had a gridiron. run. In the opera by the Italian cook Bartolomeo Scappi in 1570, one of the tables with the kitchen utensils shows two types of gridirons which he called graticula. One with the four feet and the second one below with little wheels. In his book, Scappi proposed tons of inviting recipes that employed the greedy run to grill so different kinds of fishes, but also meat. Plenty of iconography from the 16th and 17th century illustrates cooking scenes with the greedy run, both in noble and humble kitchens. Greedy runs are also dominant in iconography relating to saints, especially St. Lawrence, as a symbol of their martyrdoms. They represent the inflamed grate on which the martyrs were killed. Moreover, the same gridiron appears in several iconographies such as this one. This French colored etching by Nicolas Bonnard shows Pulcinella, literally, Armée de Pincer en Gris, armed of fire tongs and grill. He is a stock character of the Commedia dell'arte that usually appears as an old bachelor with a humbug and a popoli and a great deal of wit. He is holding the gridiron with his left hand and the fire tongs with his right, suggesting that the grill was used somehow as a theatrical prop during the performance. Previous scholarship on iconography of Commedia dell'arte, Thomas Heck and M. A. Katrinsky, have noted that the, grid, the iron grill was often used as a stage prop by comedians and suggested that it might have had somehow a musical function. Through several iconographical sources from the 16th and 17th centuries, I will illustrate how the musical grill was played, by what kind of performance and in which occasions. This print by the Flemish Jan de Velde shows a man wearing a forehead that is holding a grill on and a knife. The inscription at the bottom hints at a more specific use of his grill. It reveals that he is a servant that decided to leave the lute to his squire and play the grill on instead. He says, the roster in Dutch, this grill is my fiddle, this grill is my lute. The grill on is therefore treated as a musical instrument to be played. The choice of mentioning the fiddle and the lute was not by chance. Let's have a closer look to how the gritty run was held during performances. Various iconographies show performers holding the grill as if it was a lute or a guitar. The handle of the grill became apparently the neck of the factitious lute and the metal bars of the grate simulated the lute strings. All the grill lute players are depicted by plucking their iron bars with their hand, and it is impossible to imagine any kind of sound produced by this way of playing the grill lute. It is most likely that these performers were simply acting to play a lute imitating the instrument with an object that reminded somehow its shape. Another way of holding the grill on was to mimic a fiddle, as Van de Felder's print suggested a violin or a viola da braccio. In these three examples, a simple metal stick is used as a bow. We could imagine that it might be a spit for roasting meat on the fire. Other cooking tools were used as a bow, for example, a knife, like in these cases.
or a skimmer. And fire tongs as well. While the grill lute must have been a mute instrument, it is possible to imagine different options of playing the grill violin. First, if the player simulated the motions of playing the violin, he would rub the metal bow, the spin knife, skimmer or fire tongs, on the metal strings of the grill on. In this way, he would not produce any particular sound, as it was for the grill lute. Second, another possibility is to assess the gridiron as a middle idiophone, and even if held in the same position as a violin, the player might beat the middle bow on the gridiron, obtaining a metallic sound. Third, considering the grill as a metal idiophone, an alternative effect produced with it might be a rattling sound, if the performer rubbed the middle bow against the iron bar of the gridiron. Imagine the effect of a pyro, for example. Quoting Thomas Heck, was the grill an idiophone or an idiocy? To try to understand the musical function of the gridiron, let's now pay attention of who were the musicians and what were the contexts of the performances in which the musical grill was played. All the iconographies that I have shown illustrate masked performers. They might be stock characters of the Commedia dell'arte, such as these two Pulcinella. The term Commedia dell'arte refers to traveling troops of comedians that were born in Italy in mid-16th century. The first troops were formed by performers from a vast range of professions and educational backgrounds. They inevitably attracted those poor and uneducated that were fortunate enough to have distinctive vocal, instrumental or physical skills, but at the same time they involved also individuals, both males and females, with education and some social position. They might be independent itinerant companies of various sizes or troops associated with courts. Once fully developed, the Commedia dell'arte was the product of teamwork by professional actors and actresses who themselves provided the dialogues for performances improvised around a written scenario or plot outline involving certain stock characters. Impressive costumes, props, masks, gestures, acrobatics, and music were the ingredients to entertain the audience in public squares or private courts. From Italy, the traveling companies reached all Europe from 1570s onwards. Apart from few cases such as these two iconographies where the character of Pulcinella is well recognizable, the figure who plays the musical grill might be called as Zanni a character whose mask is not defined further as being Pulcinella, Arlecchino, Brighella, etc. However, Commedia dell'arte appears elusive by the fluidity of its boundaries and the complexity of its continuing interchanges with other cultural phenomena, such as the folk street theatre and theatrical plays, masquerades, carnival and court entertainments. The courtly banquet scene depicted by George van Winge illustrates, for example, two comedians of the left-hand side of the painting, one with the grill lute, while a lute and an organ are played on the right-hand side. The same situation is depicted in this court ball by Franz Franken, where a grill violin player is on the left side, while the other musicians with a violin and a lute are playing on the right side. Comedians were, hence, part of the court entertainment, as well as professional musicians. Moreover, since mid-16th century, favorite European carnival disguises have been the costumes associated with famous characters of Commedia dell'arte, and in some images it is difficult to tell whether the masked comic figures are some actors in a theatrical setting or simply street masqueraders or carnival revelers. Connotative features of comedians were unconstrained joy, laughter, irony and humor. These same aspects were typical of the carnival season that, using the word of Giovanni Kettich, was the fourth dimension of the social, a surrealistic universe, a world that wants to escape from the standard rules of the physic and looks directly at the fantastic, misrule, playful and absurd. 
Peter Berg sees the carnival as an enactment of the world turned upside down. Costumes allowed men and women to reverse their roles. The relation master-servant might be inverted, and the conventional taboos of sexual and aggressive impulses were encouraged. Carnival was a time of comedy, disorder, and misrule. This famous painting, Fine Fight Between Carnival and Lent by Peter Bruegel, gives an idea of the culture of carnival. In the carnival parade, there is, among other instruments, a grill violin played with a knife. This other Flemish engraving depicts a scene of the Shrove Tuesday, the heart of the carnival, where the old lady in the middle of the image, the personification of Shrove Tuesday, is inviting the other masks to eat the typical carnival Dutch waffles. On the right, a figure disguised as a nun is playing the musical grill, and in the scene we can see another mask playing a lute on the left, and a man blowing in a wind instrument from the window. An English show of Tuesday in 1630 was described as a time of such boiling and brawling, such roasting and toasting, such stewing and brewing, such baking, frying, mincing, cutting, carving, devouring, and gorbled gourmandizing that a man would think people did take in two months' provisions at once into their ponches, or that they did ballast their bellies with meat for voyage to Constantinople or to the West Indies. Other feast days that fell between December and February, in other words, inside the carnival period in its widest sense, were spread throughout Europe and were called carnivalesques. Even in these cases, we have iconographical sources that see the musical grill played by masked figures. For example, the Bean Festival, as this scene painted by Jan Stein, celebrated the Epiphany and had the same iconic atmosphere as Carnival. The role of the Bean King has fallen to the little boy who is standing on a bench and wears a paper crown. An old noun hands him a large glass of wine while his mother, in the center of the scene and already very tipsy, looks at him in amusement. A musician is playing the violin behind the laden table, while a grill violin player is depicted on the left side in foolish manners with a funnel on his head. Another carnivalesque that dated back to the medieval France is the Charivari. It was a marriage ritual that represented an expression of disapproval from the community for an unknown traditional marriage. Usually a remedied widow, widower, or a man that married a much younger woman. A group of masked figures used to show up at the window of the new married couple, making noise, singing in a cacophonous manner, and banging pots, pans, and greedy rounds. This practice has been called rough music and became a symbol to mark any affront to the sense of order or justice that spread in all of Europe. Rough music must not have been pleasant at the, as this engraving shows. The reward the musician received for such beautiful chords was a jar full of piss. To practice rough music, any kind of cooking tools was used to make noises. The musician on the left is playing the so-called rummelpot. It is a friction drum that was very common in the Low Countries and was made with a pot and a spoon or any sort of stick. When a red stick is stuck through the middle of the bladder and is moved between the thumb and fingers, the instrument produces a sound not a likely one emitted by a stock pick, describes Sly. However, not only for rough music other cooking tools were played, we can find them in the same context as the musical grill, played by comedians from Commedia dell'arte or by masked figures in carnival or carnivalesque occasions. Beyond the rummel pot we find glasses, colanders, bellows, and any kind of pots and pans, such as this typical Italian pan to roast chestnuts. 
you surely have noticed that most of the iconography I've shown is by Flemish artists. Charles Sterling, in one of the first studies on Commedia dell'arte iconography in 1940s, has already questioned why the large part of the 16th and 17th century images of Commedia dell'arte is Flemish rather than Italian. In Italy, the Commedia dell'arte was part of daily life and represented a general subject for Italian artists. At that time, general painting was still far from being thought of in Italy as a noble art, whereas had a great tradition in the country's north of the Alps, above all the Netherlands. Moreover, Dutch artists were engaged in the organization of popular festivals more than in other countries, since they were part of the so-called Roderikers, Dutch corporations that staged popular plays during festivities. It is impossible to recreate a map of artists interested in the Commedia dell'arte compared with a map of the diffusion of traveling companies. Nevertheless, further research is still needed to understand the extent of the spread of the musical grill throughout Europe. As already mentioned, all these masked figures playing the gridiron could be either professional comedians working in itinerant troops of Commedia dell'arte or common people that used to mask in occasion of carnival or carnivalesques. Sometimes, in iconographies, it is difficult to distinguish these two categories of musical grill players. Moreover, such images cannot be accepted as factually accurate snapshots of exactly what a particular artist saw on a specific occasion. Every pictorial record is, to a greater or lesser extent, affected by artistic precedents and traditions, as well as allegoric significances. To conclude, I would like to propose my answer to the previously mentioned question. Was the grill an idiophon or an idiocy? I would say both. In the case of professional Commedia dell'arte actors, the grill was surely a musical prop that was used to arouse laugh in the audience, so an idiocy. When it was used to imitate another musical instrument, either a lute or a violin, the grill became an imaginary and silent musical instrument. It was a mere object of theatrical fiction. At the same time, we cannot exclude the possibility that it was used as an idiophone, a percussive instrument. Maybe it beat the rhythm, since it was often represented in scenes where other musicians were playing actual musical instruments. Or perhaps it was used to make some idiotic noise by a character acting foolish gestures. Since these professional comedians toured around Europe by horse-drawn wagons, they needed to travel light. On purely practical grounds, it doesn't surprise us that the usual musical instruments they played were lutes, guitars, viols and lire da braccio, rather than harpsichord and spinets. Using the greedy run together with other cooking tools for their performances might have been a good strategy to save space and weight in their baggage. Those objects that were necessary for cooking and eating acquired on stage the further function of imaginary and percussive and idiotic musical instruments. Apart from professional comedians, carnival and other festivals masqueraders were the ones playing the musical grills and other pots. They were common people coming from the lower social classes that might easily replicate the practice they saw in Commedia dell'arte performances with musical tools they could find among their humble cooking appliances. Carnival and associated festivities were the perfect occasion for twisting the function of objects. If a man could dress as a woman and the relation between a master and his servant could be reversed, a greedy run to grill fish could definitely become a musical instrument. With this paper, I would like to provoke a reflection on how we are used to look at an object. Nobody would look at this historical gridiron as a musical instrument if they contextualize from his time and culture. Certainly, this object recalls the succulent Renaissance recipes of spiced grilled fish. However, it represents also a symbol of theatrical fiction when used as an imaginary musical instrument and an emblem of the surreal and absurd dimensions of the carnival celebrations and their power to subvert ordinary rules and social order. I'm sure that from now on, every time you will grill some fish, you will think of other ways to use your grill on. Thanks for your attention.